Okay, this series is going to demonstrate how to make a food prep uh, cooking sim time management game. So basically you're going to be running like a food cart or some kind of limited service um, uh, food establishment. At the top customers will appear in a little uh, thought bubble. It'll show what they want. You're going to have like a cooking area where you prepare the food and at the bottom you'll have like the bins where you get the resources from. So this first video is going to be a little bit tedious, unfortunately, because it's basically just putting a lot of things into place. But then in the second and subsequent videos, you'll really start to get into the functionality at that point. So let's begin. So let's start with our main background, the diner counter. Now it's too small for the uh, screen. The reason for this is because if you're trying to make a... Uh, an application run on as many systems as possible by minimizing how many resources are used. One strategy is to make images smaller than absolutely necessary and then just scale them up to a larger size. It's been done forever actually that way. Uh, all depends if you feel you need to save resources. In other words, uh, if you think certain systems won't run the game, then you want to cut back a little bit. You don't have to, that's just the decision I made. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale this. Uh, 2x and 2.7 for the y. We'll push this up a bit. It's okay that the edges are cut off as you can see. It's a pretty simple pattern so it's not like as if uh, anything's being missed. Now one of the really key points in this game is going to be uh, what's known as order in layer. So if you look over here you can see that this object has an order in the layer. By default it's zero. So particularly like with the hamburgers where you're going to have a bottom bun, um, a patty, a ketchup, mustard, maybe onions, pickles, and then a top bun. You want to make sure that every topping shows up in the proper order. And so what we're going to do is for each of those objects we're going to make a pre-existing, or a, a predetermined I should say, order. That way, no matter what, uh, no matter what sequence you place the the pieces in, they'll show up in the right order. So the counter should be beneath everything. So we'll make that negative one. Now, um, let's start putting in some of the supplies. So uh, here is the hamburgers for the hamburger bin. So we'll slide this over. Again, new objects default to zero, so we can leave it at zero. What's going to happen is these are your supplies. You're going to click on this and then either the patty will automatically appear in the grill or you'll drag and drop it onto the grill. I'm not sure which way we're going to do it yet. We'll see which one works out better. But at any rate, this has to be clickable. So add component, physics 2D, box collider, trigger. That alone almost makes it clickable. All you need is a script attached to it that says uh, on mouse down and then perform a task. We'll get to that in a bit. So next one, the hot dog bin. Move that similarly over into that corner. Now it's important not to have any overlap, and I don't mean just the image, I mean the collider boxes themselves, um, because we don't want uh, there to be an issue where um, the player's clicking on one and they get the other. So likewise, you also want to leave extra space to uh, account for, for player error. So physics 2D, box collider, trigger, and now we'll just highlight both at the same time. You can see that indeed there is a space between them. Uh, you certainly can tweak that a little bit if you want the space to be a little greater. Now let's take our trash bin, put it in here. And now we will surround this by add component, physics 2D. But because of its shape, let's use a polygon collider 2D. That way it's more form fitting uh, to the shape um, because if you did a box collider you'd have the corners here that would work like the trash um, because um, uh, since this is a trash bin um, if you're trying to throw something away you don't want to accidentally throw away you want to make sure that they're definitely over the image before um, uh, it, it triggers the, the, uh, the destruction of the object. So now let's put the buns and the rolls in. So buns just as the hamburger buns are all the way in the corner excuse me, just as the hamburger patties are all the way in the corner, the hamburger buns will also be in the corner. So physics 2D, box collider trigger, and then 
is the roles. Add component, physics 2D, box collider, trigger. So as you can see, we really used uh, ex uh, exactly the same approach to all these objects except the bin. Uh, actually, that should be trigger 2. Sorry, missed that. Um, so the only difference is this is a polygon collider, so it's more form-fitting. Whereas the other ones we don't want to be that particular with, as long as they're not overlapping each other. So let's check the roll and the bun. And again, there is space between them. So that's a good start. Like I said, a little bit tedious because you're not really seeing any functionality yet. Now, we want to put the uh, breadboard here. And let's scale this out. Let's make this 2x, or the x be 2. That way there's more space. Again, you can do this to save memory, save resources. If resources aren't an issue, then go ahead and draw it to the full size to begin with. And not going to put a collider box on this because what's going to happen is you're really not looking for a collision with the breadboard itself so much as the objects on the breadboard because you're going to be building up the hamburgers and the hot dogs. And that's really what you're clicking on, not the board itself. For, so for now, let's not have a collider box on this. Likewise, here's the grill. The grill also is going to function like an inventory. It's going to have objects on it. And it's really the objects that you're clicking on, not the grill itself. So it's not really the grill that requires collider boxes. When we're developing, I may find that I changed my mind and we need a collider box for some reason. But I just want to differentiate between the image and the actual, shall we say, the inventory that it's storing. The inventory is really going to be individual objects sitting on top of it. And let's see what else. Let's put our ketchup. and our mustard. These will each get collider boxes. Add component. Physics 2D will do circle colliders since they're round. And that just about gets us up to speed as far as the layout. Now this is still very basic because you're only talking hamburgers and hot dogs, ketchup and mustard, uh, and that's it. It, to really build out this game, there should also be like beverages, like maybe you have an ice bin that has like cola, juice, and milk, and they might be asking for one of those. Or maybe you have like a, uh, um, a fountain dispenser, and it has like six different flavors. It all depends how complicated you want. Maybe you're going to have a frying pan here where you cook onions and put onions on... Um, uh, on the hot dogs and hamburgers. So uh, you can really just keep building this up uh, more and more. And we'll see, again, how much interest there is in this um, video be, you know, to see how, how many of these will go out. So next, getting close as far as actually seeing functionality. We want to be able to click on these and an object will be instantiated. So say we click on the bun, well a bun should appear here. We click on the hamburger and like I said I'm thinking that rather than dragging and dropping it the hamburger will just appear. Same for the hot dog. So that means we now need to actually create hamburgers and hot dogs and buns and rolls to be instantiated and that's what we'll do now. So let's first look at the hamburger. So we're gonna drag this and this. Now if you notice there's a top and there's a bottom to the bun. So this is actually the, the final um, sandwich that you're making is going to be a composite of all the individual components. There's actually going to be the bottom of the bun. There's going to be an actual patty. Uh, there's going to be um, um, uh, the, the, there'll be like ketchup and mustard and other things put on this as well. Now um, so we have the bun, bottom, and top. So let's just highlight both of those. Add component, physics 2D, circle colliders, and we'll make them triggers. So we can take both of those, drag and drop them into our asset area. And now we can delete them. So that's our first and second uh, um, prefabs we've made. It looks like I have a prefab here from when I was testing, so my apologies. I'll actually create that one all over again.
it's similar to what you just saw with the, the, the buns. So we're going to take our patty, put it in here, and we're going to also give it Physics 2D, Circle Collider, Trigger. Drag and drop it back, and now we have our patty. Now these aren't fully done yet. We're going to have to set the orders in layer, and then we're going to have to... Um, there's eventually there's probably going to be a script attached to them as well to detect when they're being clicked on so we can delete that now so we got the bottom of the bun the top of the bun and the ha hamburger now we're going to do the same thing for the hot dog so we'll just do all three at once now that we've gone through it just like the hamburger the hot dog is actually going to be sandwiched in between a front and a back so positioning is important as far as how you line these up. We'll get into detail with that when we start um, probably in the next video. But again, we want them to all have uh, Physics 2D. And we'll go with box colliders on these guys. We'll drag and drop them. Oops, sorry about that one at a time. Hot dog, roll back, roll front. And now we can delete them. Okay. Now, we need to have, to make it simple, the ketchup on the hamburger is going to show up just as like a, like a patty. What you're going to do is you're going to have another patty. It's just going to be red. Same thing for the mustard. And it looks like I'm missing an image. So in between videos, what I'll do is I'll get the um, image of the ketchup and the mustard for the hot dog. But for now, we'll do the um, images for the um, hamburger. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use a pre-existing image, another way of saving memory. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this image and we're going to put it in here. But we're going to rename this. We're going to rename this um, ketchup, but we already have an object named ketchup, which is fine. Um, but we'll say ketchup top, short for topping, okay? Well, it doesn't look like ketchup because it's red. It's not red. So what we do is we're going to click on color. I'm just going to choose a red color. So now it kind of looks like ketchup. And what we'll do is we'll drag and drop. Um, we'll also make that Physics 2D Circle Collider. Not sure if it needs to be. For one thing, what we're going to do, and I don't want to get too ahead, is all these toppings are going to be parented or child to a single parent. So when you move the parent, they all move. So we might not actually need all these uh, colliders, but it's easy enough to remove them. Uh, so the ketchup topping will be put back. And now we'll do it again for mustard. We'll take the bun, call this mustard top, click on it. And we'll choose like a yellow color. And we'll move it up. And there we go, kind of a yellowish color. And likewise, Physics 2D, Circle Collider is Trigger. Now, I think we have just about all of the prefabs that we need for the moment. Uh, like I said, I need to get ketchup and mustard uh, images for the hot dog, but other than that, we're just about ready to get going. So let's stop here. Like I said, I apologize that this first video is kind of tedious because it's, it's really purely a layout video, but now we can jump in with the next video as far as um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, write the code to actually instantiate the objects when we click on them.